and how many are Hi everybody, everybody. It's uh, it's Andy Phillips here, and as you can see, I've got uh, Mark Barrett, our uh, resident tax expert. Hello, everyone. I want to say resident tax genius, but I don't want to blow it up too much. <laughs> <laughs> um, and today we're going to be talking about uh, the tax implications and compliance where uh, you're borrowing funds. And uh, Mark's going to go through a little bit on on this. Uh, with if you've got any questions at all, you can put them into the. Uh, uh, the comment section or uh, if you want to if it's something which is uh, a bit more private you don't really want to talk about it openly you can dm us um so direct message either myself or or mark and uh so mark should we put the presentation up yes please do okay let's stick that there. there you go okay um so uh, good afternoon everyone uh, so there's a, a simple slide there just to say we're doing about the tax implications compliance when you're borrowing funds or if you form a JV. Um, what I was going to just point out on here, if you want to contact me, then you're welcome to do so. The email address at the bottom there, the, um, you'll notice that it's pin at. The whole purpose of that simply is, um, I do like it when people work with a brilliant trainer. And I think with Simon, you've got a brilliant trainer. So um, I've made a, an offer as a gift to uh, people that if you want to you can contact me use that email address my staff know to give you as quick an access as it's reasonable to do so there is a queue okay um oh, i don't know what i've just done i'll try again to click through uh, sorry i'm cocking this up <laughs> don't worry <laughs> I'm trying to click onto the next screens uh, oh, it's on the, it's on the it's, last slide it's on the last it? one that's yeah. fine so, okay, I'll try that again, people, without cocking it up this time. Okay, um, I'm sorry, but... It's going to go on to the second slide, Mark. Yeah, okay. Um, so, introduction, um, uh, I'll probably have to do it like this. Is that all right? Okay. Yeah, um, that's fine, yeah. So, uh, obviously, a chartered accountant, uh, been in this business now for over 30 years. Um I'm personally a commercial and residential landlord, and I was a property developer. Those of you that know me know how I've managed to amass money to get my properties. Um, I love it when I see so many people asking for property experts. Um, I actually walk the talk, um, been there, done that, and um, um, I've got all the t-shirts and quite a few scars. So um, this is your health and wealth warning presentation I'm making today is not professional advice. You must not take action or refrain from taking action based on what I'm saying. Go and take advice that's personal to you. That's the advice all the time. Whenever you're talking to any, any suit, um, these general presentations are not professional advice. Go and take advice. So what are we going to talk about today? Um, it's inevitable you're going to run out of money. If you're an investor, developer, whatever, you can't manage on just your own cash. At some point, you're going to get somebody to work with you most people use a bank but if you're trying to leverage up you need the deposits if you're an investor so do you have a cash investor or a jv partner um well having a jv partner as you can read on the slide it, it really feels to me like if you're getting married it's just like having a divorce um if things don't work so don't get into bed together too fast if you're going to work with someone wherever you can um, start it as a loan arrangement. You can offer security. You learn what it's like to work together before you get into a JV. So I promise you a quick story. Um, client um, is a very experienced property chap, wanted to get involved uh, with, with someone with cash. They decided to form a JV. Absolutely fine. No problem. Quite normal. Uh, formed a JV company. And it's their first deal. The exchange has happened on the property. The completion is happening tomorrow it's seven o'clock at night and it's going to happen tomorrow so obviously mr money is sitting at home and says to his wife i've got this wonderful deal and blah, blah, blah. really she says oh good what's the property well it's just around the, around the corner oh show me so he jumps in the car with his wife goes to look at the property and his wife says under no circumstances must you put our money into that property i would never live there well whether you live there or not is not the point about an investment but lo and behold seven o'clock at night Get the phone call that says he's pulling out and the completion is happening tomorrow how much easier would it have been if this was a loan arrangement not a jv so i've had to get him out of that company quickly and get some cash into that company very quickly to allow the client to 
complete that day. Don't jump into bed too fast with people, please. Um, if you're working with a cash investor, um, it is a tax deductible expense. The four points here are really important. So do pay attention if you can to this part. The interest rate must be at commercial rates. That's HMRC's language. You can see the quote marks. What does it mean? Well, what does, what does HMRC mean by commercial rates? Now, you and I would know that actually, if you go on to social media, um, the amount of interest rates that are being offered and people are accepting deals at are actually quite high. What I'm always saying to people is get your paperwork straight. So what I would always encourage you to do, if you're borrowing money and you've agreed an interest rate, get some paperwork behind you, which means go onto the forums and see what other people are doing and print them off. Because if HMRC attack you at some later date that your rate wasn't commercial, I'll explain why that's important in a second, you've got lots of contemporaneous evidence that that's the rate that was going in the marketplace that you are in. So why is it commercial? If it isn't, com if HMRC deems something isn't commercial, we've got this thing called fragmentation and HMRC's language is actually called slice of the action. Again, you can see the quotes. What does that mean? So if you imagine you were doing a JV deal with somebody and you were trying to do a 50-50 JV deal, but you didn't want to do that, you want to do it as a cash deal, you could try to say, well, fine, I'll, I'll pay the guy an interest rate of 30%, 40%. In reality, that's not interest. You're sharing profit with that person. So that person is now a trader um, and they should be paying income tax and national insurance, not just income tax. Whereas there is interest, it's only income tax, there's no national insurance. So we're talking about potentially 9% or 12% difference in the interest rate, uh, in the tax rate. So HMRC will be interested if the, if the rate of interest is high. Now we know within the property market, 13.2%, in other words, 1% per month compounded, is not an unusual number, but prove it. Prove that that was really happening at the time you were doing this deal. So you can prove that when you're paying 8%, it was commercial. Um, the next line you can see has got really unpleasant consequences if the cash investor is offshore. So if you now imagine you've done this deal with an offshore investor, they put the money in, you've given them some ridiculous interest rate, fragmentation, you're slicing the deal with them. Um, HMRC have got the power to now say, well, that investor should have paid income tax, national insurance potentially as well if he's a trader, um, but he's offshore, so HMRC can't get to them. So you, as the UK business, have to pay your investor's tax for him. Now, there are particular circumstances where that can apply, um, but just visualize, you've got to pay your own tax and you've got to pay your investor's tax because he's offshore and he can't be got to. So be really careful about your interest rate and your evidence. Hopefully this is all making a bit of sense. I'm going quickly. I know there's only a short amount of time. Can I just ask a question? I know yeah. uh, there's only a short amount of time. <laughs> um, I mean, re listening to this, listening to you talking about this, uh, there's going to be some people out, out there that are, you know, looking for uh, JVs, investors yeah. and things like that. We're always doing those sorts. Yeah, of yeah, yeah, we all are. Par for the course. Yeah. Um, now, a lot of a lot of things we do can be pretty straightforward. They can be done with uh, you know very very simple contracts together, so people know their their business. Especially when you're just doing a um, a very simple JV, just like maybe a, a quick I don't know, purchase refurb and sure. flip. Um, but a lot of the deals that guys do out there now, all the guys and girls out there are doing, there are some specific ones that I've seen recently that are more complex and. Mm. Uh, so I saw one just recently about using foreign investors. Yes. And, uh, and I, I don't know whether they truly understand the implications uh, because there's a lot of, it seems like a lot of complexity in there. I mean, I know you make it a lot simpler uh, the way you explain things, but um, it is when, when, when you, yeah, when you first start doing this, I mean, it's, it's not a simple thing to go to get your head around. No, it is. You can fall into some very, very serious traps here. Yes. Uh, the, 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 well done. Yes, I, I'm bouncing through these. It affects what I'm doing. That's why I make this point that this is not professional advice because I'm I'm floating across the top of the surface here sure. yeah. as much as anything else to tell people 
these are the questions have this in your mind think about it so you now know what the question is when you speak to your advisor your accountant us at least you know roughly there's a question you don't know the answers yet so with expat uh, so with overseas um investors people will again some people will know that my firm specializes with what we call expat tax advice we'll deal with overseas cash um and always you're in that situation of trying to work out what it is that the overseas investor will want so quite literally this week i've got australians who are you know, investing in the uk um and therefore they've got to set themselves up properly for their own purposes but they've got to set up properly for the uk uh, partners benefit as well and actually what we've done is we've created uh, an australian company that now has a uk subsidiary of the australian company and it's the uk subsidiary that is involved in the jv with the uk client simply because we can bounce the tax we can bounce the income through that a lot more tax efficiently and they can get the cash where they need it which is in australia because they don't have an intention to come to the uk you can have a situation where someone is a um, a resident uh, sorry a, a, an expat they may be currently living in Abu Dhabi, you know, Riyadh, wherever they are, um, but they intend to come back. So fine, we would structure that completely differently. But for the UK investor, what's really important is that you've got to be careful that you are not ending up with their tax bills. You, you do not want to pay UK tax on your profit and your investors' share of the profits. So, so really, I mean, the 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 the, the concepts here is that if you are getting into these these sort of deals with yeah. maybe foreign investors and things like that, and just, I mean, it's just any any deal that's a little bit more complicated than the norm, let's say, it's it's more than worth talking to you. I mean, so I know that. I mean, one thing I want to reiterate is that you know you you, you put um uh, an email address here, and uh, people can who are pin members, you know, pin mm -hmm. pin people can uh, go and talk to you and you, yep. you give some advice for free and it's really really cool you do that but i, I want to reiterate that that's a that's a it's a it's a nice thing to do it's a it's a, a free service that you're you're willing to do for people but it's don't take the mickey out of it you know bottom line is if you <laughs> if you are going to do some of the some of this sort of thing you yeah. know think about um taking on someone like you to look at the contracts and make sure that everything's in the right place, make sure the tax implications are, are correct, because it can save them a tremendous amount of money and a lot of heartache as well. I mean, it's not just the, the, the cash. I mean, the cash can be painful because if you've got to give out, you know, another 50 grand or something because yeah. of, you, you haven't done the tax right, that can be painful. But it's, it's, the, it's the stress and the heartache. that, that And um, it goes on for years. Yeah. A, a, an inquiry like that can go on for a very long time. So thank you for several of the comments there. Obviously, um, just pick up on, on a couple of them. Uh, yes, I have had a couple of people who believe that um, just because I want to give a gift to PIN family, and I, I give a gift to the PIN family simply out of respect for Simon. Um, I've got a huge amount of respect for the guy. I've probably listened to Simon speak now 20 hours. <laughs> it would not be funny, but to get me in a room sitting, listening to someone for 20 hours, that's not bad. Um, I've never been able to pick the guy up once on anything he's ever said. I've ne not once. That's I can't say that I've done that with anybody else. So I've got immense respect for Simon, and therefore as a gift to the Pin family. But it is a gift. Um, don't come and be rude to me. And I've, I, I've had people recently who've demanded that I must deal with it now because I'm obliged to deal with it. No, I'm not. Um, so just be nice people. Yeah. Um, and if it's not me, and that's okay, if I don't fit you, that's absolutely fine. Go and get a property specialist and please be a little bit wary of property specialists um it's quite amazing i've been doing this for quite a few years now and all of a sudden you see the you know the the question come up anyone know a good accountant oh yeah oh, uh, that, that apparently there's about ten thousand property specialists out there no i can name you about six eight guys that i th guys and girls who i think are actually quite good there's not that many who are actually really know what they're doing yeah, um, to, to, the, to this sort of depth i mean this is one of the reasons why i bring you on because there's there's you know you, you prove time and time again about that all the different types of uh different types of contracts different types of, of tax implications and we that's why we bring you on here because it's okay, yeah. it's not easy you know <laughs> this stuff is no. not easy. you need to specialize in this stuff you need to truly understand i'm um, um, walking the talk yeah yeah so anyway right 
Um, thank you for that. I'm going to crack on. Um, CT61. Again, um, uh, if I said it was every day, I'd be lying, but it's at least three, four times a week. OK, people are telling me and they're getting things wrong. So HMRC, lovely. Um, they're working at the end of the day for us because you know, we all want hospitals and policemen and everything else and armies and, and we've got to pay tax. Just don't pay too much. They get us to be unpaid tax collectors. Um, and the way that works is very simple. They tell you the rules. You have to apply them. It doesn't cost you any tax. So CT61 will not cost you a penny. But they've got a heck of a big stick to hit you with if you don't do it properly. Yeah. And they make an awful lot of money from penalties. So CT61. Um, I'm trying to do slideshows so the right bits come up at the right time, but I can't. So I, I'm just going to have to put all of it up at the same time. Can, but can you hit the resume slideshow button on that and just see what yeah, happens? My mouse is disappeared, matey. Oh, right. Okay. I don't know. It's just two seconds. Little, okay, you can't get it. Okay, well, don't worry. If I haven't got a mouse, I haven't got a mouse. So I'm yeah, put, it, put it all up at once and see what happens. Right. So City 61 rules, folks. Um, so here we've got a situation where someone has loaned you some money and you're paying them interest. And if you can remember back to the days when you used to earn interest at the bank, can you all remember those days? Um, what your bank statement would say is, hey, well done, you've earned £10 worth of interest, I've deducted £2 worth of tax, here's your eight quid, and you can, don't forget to put it on your tax return. That is CT61. Right. It's where the person paying the interest has to deduct tax. That's what it's about. So, if you pay interest from a company to a company, okay, it's company loan money to a company, interest is paid company to company, CT61 does not apply. If you pay interest from an individual to a company, it doesn't apply. If you pay for an individual to an individual, it doesn't apply. But the one that catches us all is we own companies. We've borrowed money from an individual, Auntie Nelly. And therefore, the company's going to pay her interest. It does apply. You've got to apply CT61 if two conditions apply. Number one. If the deal is scheduled to be more than a year in duration. So even if you've borrowed the money for a two year deal and your agreement says it's a two year deal and you paid it all back in 10 months because it was longer than a one year deal, you have to do a CT61. Right. Or you've done a 10 year contract, a 10 month contract rather, and the deal actually lasted for longer than a year. You've got to apply CT61. So let me describe CT61. Dead easy. It doesn't cost you any tax, but it's compliance. What you've got to do, you've got to register with HMRC and say, hey, Mr. HMRC, I have borrowed some money and CT61 will apply. So you've now registered. That obliges you to complete a quarterly return. Don't complete the quarterly return. You're going to get smacked. As you pay interest, you have to record you have paid interest to who. So what we need their details. Um, and this amount of interest you've paid and you've deducted 20% tax, so the net amount you paid them was, and hey, here, Mr. Taxman, here's the tax I collected for you as an unpaid tax collector. If you get only that wrong, you will get smacked. What HMRC have done, of course, now, is it now says, hang on, Auntie Nelly, my imaginary <laughs> lender, um, they now know that she's got some income. And they're now saying, well, actually, Auntie Nelly, has a pension, she's has to pay tax. In fact, she's just tipped herself into higher rate tax. We need a tax return from her. And if she doesn't, she gets smacked as well. So if any of you have ever heard me speak before, I've talked about a computer system called Connect. It's where you connect up lots of information. HMRC have this system. It is phenomenal. And you're just inputting to it. You are now connecting Auntie Nelly to you. There's now information about Auntie Nelly and therefore HMRC knows that Auntie Nelly's got to do a tax return to see what Connect works. So this is this is what what again this sort of information where you're borrowing money from a relative. Yep. You have to take that into consideration that something like that may happen, and I don't think people really do because nope. we're, we're sort of told, oh, you know, look around, see who's who's you know, some people might have yep. some some yep. savings, and you know yep. that sort of thing. Yep. People don't take that into consideration. So 
getting in touch with you early to whenever you're doing any of these sort of sort of deals, it's not going to cost them a fortune, but it will might save them a fortune. Oh yeah, um, it, the, the story I'm about to give you is unrelated to CT61. It's not that. It's, it's something called CIS. CIS is the same thing. You're just a tax collector, um, but if you get it wrong, you get a smack. The worst one I've had: twenty-four thousand quid the man owed. Okay. There was five grand of tax, £19,000 worth of penalties, and the penalties were non-negotiable. So even though I could attack the five grand and yeah. try and get that figure down, the £19,000 was non-negotiable. He had to pay the £19,000 in penalties because he didn't act as an unpaid tax collector properly. Right, right. Don't play this game, folks. Just to try and do it properly. Um, if you're clients of mine, and hopefully some of you listening are clients, you know you just pick up the phone just talk to us and say i'm going to i'm going to do this deal any any issues mark yep and me or any of the other 40 odd staff we'll, we'll tell you what the issues are and it's and it's worth having having this you know within your power team you know because i think a lot of people sort of go i'm going to try and do the minimum amount of people you know i'll get a solicitor when i need it i'll get a tax guy when i need it and things yeah. like that but it's actually good to yeah, they're penny wise and pound foolish. Yeah, yeah, and it's because it, I mean it is these are these are big numbers. When you're talking about property and you're talking about these sort of deals, you're talking about big numbers always, aren't you? Yeah. So shall I do number five now? And I'm going to use Andy as my example. So Andy now owns a company. He's got um, Phillips Property Limited, um, and his and Andy's auntie Nelly wants to lend some money because she's very fond fond of her nephew. Um, Andy's taking advice and says, but Auntie Nelly, you're going to have to pay tax. Oh, I don't want to pay tax, dear. How the hell are we going to deal with it? Well, it's dead easy. We know that Phillips Property Limited does a tax return. We know that Andy has to do a tax return. So why doesn't Auntie Nelly loan the money to Andy? So Andy's paying her the interest. So now go back to number three on here. If you pay interest from an individual to an individual, it does not apply. So Andy can pay interest to his Auntie Nelly. No problem. And he's now got the cash and loans the cash down to Philip's property. CT61 applies, but what the hell does Andy care? Because his accountant's going to deal with the tax return for the company and the tax return for himself. So even if the CT61 gives you the fear of, oh, I might not be able to borrow money. Yes, you can. We can skin the cat another way. But you do just take some advice, will you please? Um, I really don't want to have to deal with the penalties all the time. I'd, ra I'd rather just get the tax collection work done easily and economically. Yeah. yeah. So that was CT61. I'm going to move on to working with a JV. You're pleased to hear we're almost there. Um, if you're working with a JV partner and you've listened to my advice, don't jump into bed too soon. You're almost always likely to form an SPV. Almost. There will be a situation where you say, well, my brother and I want to buy a property, fine. But you, you might want to buy it as tenants in common or something. Okay, I understand. But if you're an entrepreneur, and people listening to this presentation are likely to be entrepreneurs, you're going to be doing quite a few. You'll form an SPV. And, and that is a special purpose vehicle, that is SPV. That is what a special purpose, yeah, that, an SPV normally means special purpose vehicle. I prefer the phrase single purpose vehicle. Right. It is a company formed for the single purpose. And the single purpose is to hold the relationship with the JV partner. Right. It's not to hold the property we're going to buy, but it's to hold the relationship because hopefully you're going to buy lots of properties together. Um, so therefore, you would both tend to invest in the SPV, either both of you as, as individuals or both of you as limited companies. And the reason for that is, let's imagine now, Andy, I'm going to pick on you again, my friend. Andy and I are now going to do a business together. I'm going to invest through a limited company. Andy isn't. Andy's going to invest as an individual. It's now March. I want some cash. So I say, look, we've got a profit, Andy. I want to declare a dividend. Well, because the dividend's been paid from one limited company to another, it's not going to affect my tax at all. Right. Andy's in the situation of saying, for goodness sake, Mark, don't declare a dividend in March. Tax year end is 5th of April. You're screwing my tax, my friend. So all of a sudden now, Andy and I have got disagreement because I want the cash now. He says, please leave it for later. And it's because one of us has gone as an individual, one's gone as a limited. You start to have problems on the extraction method and the extraction timing. So if you can, if you're going to invest in JV, 
the guys like form one for he's got last night um if you're listening yep i told you exactly this and you all decided to invest as individuals absolutely fine if that isn't the case is there's, there is an exception this will perk some ears up i hope let's imagine that one of the partners is a british citizen but they're non-resident they've got to be a british citizen but non-resident okay yep. so, you know your, your auntie nelly's now sitting in dubai um there is That's a auntie Nelly. <laughs> she's she's an active old girl that one she, she gets um, around it. yeah she gets around um you'd be surprised what she gets involved in um there is a thing called disregarded income now that is really techie stuff but it is possible for a british citizen in another country to have income which is called disregarded and it is you just ignore it all right um so therefore andy could get into a jv with his auntie nelly who's in dubai she might come in as an individual because she's on disregarded income in which case we haven't got a problem then all right okay, so that one again just to prick your ears if that's if that, that scenario makes sense to you is relevant to you rather um again you now know that there's a question you now need to come to a real specialist what we're talking about here with expats and non-residents and property i truly don't know very many i think it's actually only two of us in the country who are specialists at that at those combinations um but i think it's worthwhile thinking about that forming an xpv huge amount to consider this one slide i can talk to this for about an hour i'm not going to <laughs> um one of the things that i get desperately worried about um is that I see JVs where I've got desperate property people. They are desperate. And they're paying ridiculous interest rates and all sorts of things. And they're setting up ridiculous. I don't know whether my emails are coming up on your screen as well. I was, if I no, get up, no. Okay. Good. Um, you know, they're coming up in the corner of mine. Um, and I lost the mouse, so I can't. Anyway. Um, desperate for a deal. So they're giving away everything. Think about this one, folks. In a JV, what each person puts into the business, what should they get out? So if someone puts cash into a business, well, they should get interest, shouldn't they? Yeah. If a person puts skill in, for example, you've sat on Simon's Mastermind and you are truly skillful now, well, that's worth money. You're going to do the finding the property. Well, that's called deal sourcing. That's worth money. Yeah. You're going to manage the re refurb. Well, Project management, that's worth money. All these things are worth money, but the cash investor is only doing one thing, and they're putting cash in. But lo and behold, I see people who are giving the cash investor 60, 70% of the profits. How absurd is that? You're valuing yourself so cheaply. Just think about what each person puts into the deal and make sure that their rewards are appropriate. Right. You as property professionals, you're sitting here, you're using your time learning, hopefully, from this presentation. You've got skills, they're worth money. Um, I'll go on to trading. There's been lots of rules, and again, I see it where people try and do it wrong. They say, well, because I'm doing the project management, I'm gonna oversee the project, therefore I'm going to take some profit out. Okay, so you're now trading with your own company. You are billing your own company. That's, a, that's okay, except are you self-employed? Are you registered as self-employed? Do you want to pay income tax and national insurance on the money that you are charging your company to do project management? Please be careful about trading with your own company. There was a case called the petrol station case. I'm sorry, that is what it's called, petrol station case, where that was kicked out um, and HMRC went all over them and it, the steamroller and cost them a lot of money. Don't try trading with your own company and especially without advice right um profit extraction quite often we set up companies with different share classes so again now let's imagine andy and i have now done a deal um and my job is to put the cash into andy's deal but it might well be that i say well fine i'll share the profits but the first 20 grand is mine because that's my interest so we now set up a different share class to say well once the Twenty thousand pounds that is entitled to this share class has been paid. The profits on the the, the rest of the profits are distributed 
and maybe I get an extra small handshake out of the additional profits. But you might want me paid first. Quite often, easier to arrange that with share classes, for example. Um, people will be used to share classes where you, um, you're married and you want to give your partner some profits in the company because it's tax efficient. I understand that, but just make sure you're married yeah. uh, uh, to, to comply with the settlement legislation and the Arctic case. Voting rights, be careful of voting rights. Um, again, if Andy and I were in business together, Andy, poor example, Andy, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make your skills lower than they really are. We might be in a situation <laughs> where, we say, <laughs> where we might say, Mark, you're good at all this stuff. You do the paperwork. And effectively, Andy's given me the role of chairman. I, I run the company. I decide what we're going to talk about, what we're going to do. I'm chairman. So actually, I get a chairman's casting vote. So be careful about that one as well. When you get into business with someone, make sure there's a shareholders agreement. Yes, you really should have it drawn up by a lawyer. If you can't afford the two grand, three grand for that, okay, but at least write it down and have it witnessed. Have it written down between the pair of you in English and have it witnessed so it's a deed because at least now you've got some, some hope of having an agreement between you, but make the shareholder agreement when you're all friends, not when you're starting to fall out. And the most important thing of any JV, communicate, <coughs> communicate, communicate openly, honestly, frequently. Um, and that's it. I said I would speak for half an hour. I haven't. I've done 35 minutes. My apologies. But um, today's presentation was, and you've got my contact details at the bottom. So yeah. if I knew how, I would get out of this screen, but I don't know how to. So, Andy, can you I'll control do that? That? <laughs> I'll do that. Uh, that's absolutely brilliant. I mean, it really goes to show you that, you know, that there's, uh, there is a lot to this. And when you're getting into these sort of deals, it's, it's, it's good to touch base with... Um, you know the professionals. I mean, tax obviously is a, is is a, a key thing, but it's it's not something which you should take lightly, especially when you're getting into deals with JV partners mm -hmm. um, or if you're borrowing cash. I mean, this is the yeah. this is the key advice, really, isn't it? If you if, if you're your own money and you're doing your own deals, happy days. It's still a good idea to sort of you know um, have a have a tax advisor yeah. specialist because there's there's obviously going to be ways of mitigating tax within any business vehicle. And and that's really the the point of it. This isn't about sort of avoiding tax. Yeah. You know, this is just about just paying the tax that you, that's due in the right way. I mean, this is the whole point of all business. It's not to to avoid tax. It's basically to to only pay the tax that you absolutely need to pay, so you can keep as much profits as you possibly can. That's the point of it. Cool. I think I'll get you to write that down. That was very good. I'll do a strap line for you. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. But it's it's it is it, exactly it. The goal of all this, and and this is just what we've been talking about today, is literally just an extension to that. It's like, you know, you, you've got to do this properly, otherwise it will cost you. And if it's if it starts hitting your profits, it, all it means is you cannot take that profit and start putting it into the next deal, which is the the the, the way professional property investors work. Absolutely. Uh, can I just add a, a couple of words on that one, just if I may? One thing I really struggle with with all property people, and again, anyone that's ever spoken to me will have heard this before. Property people tend to look at their feet. I've, I've got this property. I want to do this deal. So you're looking at now. You're looking at your feet. Look at your horizon. Work out where you're going to. What do you want when you're retired? What do you want your death to look like? That's how I start all my conversations. Tell me what you want your retirement and death to look like. Now, I'll work out which direction your feet should be traveling to get there. Now, that will include your structures, whether JVs make sense, what sort of JV partners you're looking for, what sort of deals you're looking for. These are the things you really got to be doing. And then you get into these detailed layers, which I've been trying to do today about okay, fairly superficially, I know, but how do these work? So when you present yourself to your JV partner or your cash investor, you're not looking like a numpty. You're actually going there and talking about CT61 because they probably know about it and you really ought to know about it too. Yeah. You're meant to be the professional. So yeah. That was it. Yeah, brilliant, Mark. That's absolutely superb. We've uh, we've done our thirty-five minutes, and and that was absolutely fantastic. And it really does go to show that there's so many little bits and pieces that are, are, are you know are so important as we go through this. Yeah. And as I say, you know, getting a tax advisor, getting a, a, a decent solicitor, you know, a decent lawyer uh, on these things. Absolutely. So people know about this stuff. 
Yeah, get the power team around you. Get the good guys yeah, around you. is absolutely incredible, and and the tax advice is 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 a, a pinnacle part part of that because it can save you so much money and heartache, and it and it is that is the psychological pain, I think, mm. that really crucifies people. It's not just you know money's a bitch when you've got to pay money out that you don't expect to, but yep. it's just that you know because it can, as you say, it can go on for ever. Um, yes. And it can and it can really hurt, you know. The the just yeah. and even if you win, yeah. It, it, even if it's not being funny, you go through an HMRC inquiry. Inquiry. I've had one of my worst examples. I've had one that lasted for three and a half years. Yeah. Now at the end of it, HMRC were pursuing them for fifty four grand. I think we paid them one hundred and eighteen quid. Yeah. I, I I got the figure down from fifty four thousand pounds to one hundred and eighteen pound. Yeah. That's fine. So well done, Mark. You you know, you, you saved it. Yeah, they still had three and a half years oh, hell. of horrible letters. And yeah. right, we're going to take you to court, and then they say, "Oh no, we're going to postpone it." Oh, we're going to take you to court. No, we're going to postpone it. And they're just exerting this pressure on your brain, and you don't yeah. need it. So avoid. The it's, it's not what we're doing it for, you know. We, no. we're doing it, you know, we, we, when we fast start doing these things, we're doing it because we want to be free and we want to do, you know, uh, be able to do the things we want to do and ha have a happy time, and you know put some money towards our pensions and you know <laughs> all those sort of things all the good things in life you know try and help our lives out and help our families out and things like that yep. doing you know getting caught in that sort of trap and you know as you say three and a half years of pure hell the money's insignificant after a while you know some in some ways you just want to go look let's just pay the bloody thing <laughs> well the, the one i was just referring to 54 down to um probably six times they've come to me and said but mark we're now down to 20 grand i'll pay it yeah. Uh, well, you don't have to. Well, okay then. Six times they wanted to pay the bill. Actually, they didn't owe any money. Um, and, and, and it actually, it's a good story. I won't bore anyone with it. My fees, which were covered by a fee protection policy, everybody make sure you got fee protection policies, please, um, were 14,000 pounds to deal with this. Um, and that actually offended me that the insurance company were paying for it. So I actually got HMRC to pay my fees. Brilliant. Because it was so wrong to do what they've done, um, but that's rare. <laughs> that's yeah, rare. I know, but it, it's, it's, it's a it's a sweet <laughs> feat, <feet> either. <laughs> really feels good, and I did, I did take a picture of the check. Yeah, I know. Oh, brilliant. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely fantastic talking to you. Um, we're going to be doing a, uh, some more of these. We're going to do series. We're going to do probably a couple of months. Um, so yeah. make sure that when you see this, uh, you know click on the uh, reminder and all that sort of thing. Look out for it in the newsletters and stuff like that. Because uh, this will save you a tremendous amount of money, and just getting your head around it and and getting the right attitude towards uh, this sort of thing is is paramount. I can't I can't express enough. I mean, I know because it's it's helped me out over the years as, a, as an investor. So uh, yeah. awesome! Thanks very much, Mark. That's been brilliant. Lovely to you all. Bye, See you, everybody. A little bit later, maybe in a couple of weeks' time with Mark. See you later.